The ultimate at-home slice and bake cookie is a fridge cookie or an icebox cookie, which come out of a time where you could just make the dough, have it in your fridge, slice, bake, ready to go. And that's exactly what these chocolate chip oatmeal refrigerator cookies are. They're super simple, it's my grandma's recipe, and it's one of my favorite. To switch it up a bit, add more flavor, we're gonna use browned butter. Now, if you haven't browned butter, it's super easy. We're gonna start with butter, <laughs> delicious butter. We're gonna put it in a small pan. You can use an open skillet. I think it browns quicker. And we're just gonna take this over to the stove. When you bring it to the stove, we're just gonna put it on low heat. We're gonna slowly let it melt. Eventually, it's gonna start bubbling and simmering, foaming. And then when the foam subsides, you'll see all these brown little bits. And we'll have browned butter and it will smell amazing. I'm gonna turn the heat off now. You can see it was really foamy. And what I really notice is the smell. And also when you drag your spatula or something through, do you see all of those browned bits? See all those brown bits and all of them that are forming up here on that foam? That's exactly what you want. And you can see the beautiful color. You can smell the toastiness. So I'm gonna just decant it here into a little bowl. One now, look at all those. You want all that browning because that right there, that's flavor. And it's so much flavor. So I'm gonna pour all this into the bowl and I'm putting it into a bowl just so it cools off quicker. We can't make cookies with really hot butter. It would burn, it would burn the egg, it wouldn't be good. So we're gonna let it cool somewhat down to room temperature or closer to, and then we can make the cookies. But if you haven't made brown butter or if you haven't put it in cookies, let this be your wake up call. It's worth it and it's good. Look at all those. See that? It's just good. So you can see now that the butter has just cooled slightly to room temperature and look at all those bits that are on here and down below. See those brown bits? That's that flavor we're gonna put into these cookies. It's absolutely delicious. So we're gonna put this right in here. Now we're starting with melted butter, which you can do in a cookie. It can change the texture, but the thing is, since these are a fridge cookie, we're gonna have to chill them in a little bit it will just bring it right back to how it should. So we're gonna put this in here. Now it won't cream like a traditional butter and sugar mixture for a cookie would because we're using melted butter, but that's okay. We're still gonna mix all the ingredients together. We put the butter right in there. We're gonna add some brown sugar, which you just lightly pack into your measure and then you have to wait for it to come out, which is never easy, but ah, there it goes. We're putting that in there too, which the brown sugar is gonna up the caramelly toffee notes of the brown butter. So they're really gonna play on each other and give it even more flavor. Then some just white sugar also. We're gonna mix that together just to combine it. Again, it's not gonna cream, it's just gonna mix together, which you're gonna see won't look that pretty. You can see it is nothing special. It is just kind of a wet mixture. And to that, we're gonna add our egg. So just one egg, unlike some cookies, we don't want these to really grow a lot in the oven. We're not wanting a lot of loft on them. We're just wanting, they're kind of like a short cookie a, with heavy amount of butter, a high ratio of butter, high ratio of fat, which is gonna make them more of a short cookie. So to that, we're gonna add a little bit of vanilla because vanilla just ups all those other flavors, the toffee flavors, the caramelly flavors. We're gonna mix that in, which will take no time since it's just one egg. And then we're gonna move on. The egg is mixed in there, the vanilla is mixed in there. It still smells pretty amazing if you ask me. So now we have some dry ingredients. We're gonna start with flour. I am never one to sift flour, but I always use a scoop, lighten it with my scoop, and then overfill a measuring cup. You've seen me do this in videos. This just ensures that we don't pack in too much flour, because you really can. If you just take your scoop in there and pack it in, you're gonna get way too much flour. Instead, we're going to overfill, see how I'm doing that, and then just scoop it off. Then you get the perfect amount. We're gonna put that in there. Now with that, we're gonna add just a little bit here, a little bit of salt. It balances all the flavors out, just a little bit, and some baking soda. Now we're not doing a high amount of baking soda. It's a small amount because again, we don't want these to grow. We don't want them to lift in the oven a lot. We just want them to have enough little bit of texture, but also soda helps them, you know, just kind of brown evenly too. So to that, we're also gonna add some oats. Now, this is one of my favorite parts of a cookie. A lot of refrigerated cookies wouldn't necessarily have oats. I love the oat component. I love that mixture. I love the texture it gives to these. So to me, it's a very traditional thing too to have oats on an old cookie recipe. So we're gonna mix all this up and then add the chocolate. So you can kind of see, it's a sandy texture. 
It's kind of a loose, a little bit texture, but what we're gonna do now is add in our chocolate chips, which I'm adding mini chocolate chips. You could chip chocolate or cut chocolate, slice chocolate down to smaller pieces, but the thing is, since we're going to make a log slice bake, it's easier if the pieces are smaller. So why do the work? I'm just gonna add in the small amount of them, and we're gonna mix that up, which takes here just a few seconds because they're so small, they incorporate really easily. But you, this is where you really see that it's kind of a sandy, loose texture for this dough. And that is just what we want because what we're gonna do now is make two logs. So like I said, these are a slice and bake cookie. Now you, I'm sure, have gone to a grocery store, bought in those logs of dough, and sliced and baked at home. Now, they're okay, I get it, we all do it. But the thing is, they don't have a lot of flavor. Guess what this has? It has a lot of flavor. So we're making our own. Now I'm gonna take about half the mixture roughly, cause it's just easier to work with. And we're gonna make our log. So this is why this texture is just right. You can see here as we put it down on the parchment, which is gonna be easier for us to make the log, it holds together as we squish it. So what we're gonna do is slightly start squishing it into a log shape, which is rough at first. You can use your hands. Don't feel, this is the fun part. This is where cookies and baking can involve kids, other family members, because this is the fun stuff. You can get your hands kind of dirty, but you're also smelling something amazing. Seriously, these smell <laughs> unbelievable. And it's that brown butter. That really just smells to me unbelievable. So what I'm doing is getting a rough log shape. It's not perfect yet, and that's okay. Because then what we can do is start shaping it by the parchment. So one way I like to do it is just put that parchment over the other, and you can kind of start molding it into a log. You can even take a bench scraper sometimes. I just have, you know, a simple six inch bench scraper and I will just take it sometimes and put the parchment and make that pressure to make a tight log. Cause the thing is, if you work hard now to get a nice tight shape on this cookie log, it's gonna be easier to slice later. Because as it solidifies in the fridge and chills, that butter is gonna solidify, which all that then is gonna compress together see that log we're making? It's gonna to compress together and you're gonna have then a much easier cookie to slice. So I'm pretty much done. I'm gonna get those ends a little bit. Again, just fold. You can all the time be working, fold your edges in, take your bench scraper one last time and just really tightly make so it has a nice log to it. Then we're gonna roll it up, cinch the ends, make it tight, we're gonna put this in the fridge. I'll do the other one too. Once it's chilled, I'll bring it out. We'll slice them, we'll bake them, and I'll eat them finally. I'm taking the first batch out. This is what's great about these. So they don't move a lot. They're like a, they're like a shortbread cookie, a short cookie. This was the first ones I cut off, and I put a little bit of sea salt on them, or actually I did a big chunky flaky salt, which you can see. And you can do it at the end too, but I just think that hit of salt, again, it's more what you want. You know, the salt you put on chocolate chip cookies or with a chocolate, it's for the people that love it, but it's that sweet salt that you can't go wrong with. Now, you can let them cool in there for a few minutes, but for dramatic effects, since we're just filming this, I'll take them off right away. They don't really move a lot. They're just a softer cookie, but then when you take them off, they're gonna cool. And as they cool, they get kind of crisp but they're very buttery, which you saw. And that's what the best part is. So when you do go to eat them, they just kind of melt in your mouth. And that's what I love. I love a cookie that, one, can be made ahead. So at this point, once they cool, you could put them in an airtight container and keep them in a freezer easily. But what you also can do is, before you even slice them, you can keep the log wrap it in an airtight container after it's already wrapped in the parchment, and then put that in your freezer and you are gonna have cookies whenever you want. You can just take them out, slice it, bake it. Now, the important thing anytime you're gonna make a slice and bake cookie, you can see I just unrolled them from that parchment, but is to make sure that you really compress the dough that you're going to roll in. So if you need to knead it a little bit to make sure it really wants to stay together because what happens is if you don't, they're gonna wanna crumble and you don't want a crumbly cookie. So what I like to do is just go through and start cutting them open. Look at all that. Now, some of the small chips, obviously on the edges, are gonna crumble because that's a small chocolate chip. Now, if you get through it though, and you think, oh, but some of them fell out, you can just push them back together and then set them on here. That's the best part. These are the ultimate 
They're the ultimate convenience cookie, and I think that's what's great, is these are from a time where, you know, they didn't have a grocery store just to run to and get these cookies. No, instead they did them at home. They made them at home, and I think that's the best part, is that you can too. You can take these and make them at home, and I think that's what we all wanna do. Because yes, I get it. Grocery stores make it easy to go buy these things. But guys, if you taste these compared to a grocery store one, there's no competition, let me tell you. These really are better. Instead of watching me go through all this, you can, once they're on here, you can put a little bit of that salt on them if you want. If you don't, that's fine too. But the best part is then, once they're cool, which these are still gonna be kinda hot, but look. Oh yeah, look at that. You get the beautiful chips. So when you use actual chips, What's great about it is they kind of stay together. They're not like just baking chocolate that just melts into pools. The chips will always kind of stay together, which makes it easy too as they break apart. <laughs> it's so good. Grandma would have loved these because one of her favorite flavors is browned butter. Because brown butter has toasty, caramelly, caramelly, nutty flavors. And that you can't beat. Mixed with that delicious, almost melt away texture of this cookie is delicious. And you get the bits of chocolate in it. You get the salt on top. It gives you that hit that you want. And it is so, so good. So what do I hope you do? I hope you make these cookies. Because that's the important part. I hope you really push the dough together, make a beautiful log, slice the cookies, and have fun. If, you know what, I always say with a recipe, try it once and see what you think. The more you use a recipe, the more you're gonna enjoy it. As always, share this video around, because guess what? Yeah, it helps me, but it helps everyone else see good food is doable at home. Forget about going to the grocery store, make it at home. And check my website, wiseguide.com, for this recipe and all my other recipes. They're all on wiseguide.com. It all lives up there. So until next time, make a slice and bake, make something delicious, have people over, share it around. That is the point of good food.